I just wanted to kind of see where your reasoning was going more so than anything. Um, I think you guys kind of got hung up on a point, but I just want to know, like, just generally speaking, what's the direction you're going? So let's say we, you know, but let's say we just grant, you know, most of the atheist arguments are going to be like some sort of an intuitionistic case. Um, uh, what's the what's the issue with that? And where are you going? Well, the basic issue with that it uh, there are two issues with that. One issue is that uh, belief in God is intuitive. Belief in life after death is intuitive. And there are psychological studies that can show these things are intuitive. So if you are using these things as evidence, intuitions as evidence, and are those things proven as well? Or are you just cherry picking intuitions? That's one uh, line of reasoning I was going with. The other line of reason reasoning I was going with, if you uh, you do know about the recent uh, documentaries that were made by atheist philosophers and scientists on the Kalam argument and the fine tuning argument, right? Uh, I have not like the with documentary. Do you know about them? A documentary? I, 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 I'm not aware of any documentary regarding that. Okay, uh, basically there are two famous documentaries, uh, made on, one made on the Kalam argument and f another on the fine tuning argument. Most of the major atheist philosophers and scientists came there and basically they made the case against these arguments. One thing they said again and again is that intuitions are not evidence. Right? They were making this point again and again. Now, the problem I have with all of this is, okay, if you don't want to take intuitions as evidence, then these atheist arguments that I am saying are based on intuition, they fail as well. If you are taking them as evidence, atheism fails as well because belief in God is intuitive. So this so was my line of um, so let's walk through this. So there's some there's some significant issues with the with the first argument. So are you familiar with like phenomenal conservatism? Have you ever heard of that term? Uh, can you speak again? I um, are you are you from, okay? Are are you familiar with phenomenal conservatism? Does that term mean anything to you? Uh, no. Okay. So essentially, within epistemology, we might have the case that I have like an intuition, for instance. Um, and if what we mean by an intuition is some sort of seemings, that's usually the, the kind of thing that, it, that intuitions are. Like, it just seems to me to be the case that X is true. Um, and, you know, the, the kinds of things that philosophers in the past have said are non-inferential. So we're, we don't, what, we, what we're not doing is taking some prior pieces of information, putting them together, and then drawing a conclusion from those things. Um, in phenomenal cool. conservatism, intuitions are checked by other, by other things. So an intuition in itself is not going to be given as, like, just, just by itself. Oh, that's a um, that that's going to be something that we accept as true, right? So instead, what they say is they'll say intuitions absent defeaters are going to be things that we should accept as true. But the the issue is is that the argument you're using, the problem of, of evil, especially if it's going to be like the uh, the inductive version, is going to be a strong a, a strong defeater for the the possibility of the existence of God. Um, so so the idea is like if, even if I have the intuition that God exists, I can still be mistaken about that. Like if I'm at the top of the building, I might look around me and say the Earth appears flat from my perspective. So I have this intuition that it must be flat. Must be flat. I'm mistaken about that intuition. The way I know that is by the, there are other facts that can check our intuitions. What we call these defeaters. Um, so, the, so the God that you're going to propose is going to be have a defeater, like things like the problem of evil. Even if it's the case, which I don't find God intuitive. I, I, I don't have that intuition. I don't think I've ever really had like this intuition that God must exist or something. I was taught those things, um, and I believe those things in virtues of those teachings. But maybe, maybe it's true that you do have those intuitions. How do you respond once you're introduced to defeater? Because presumably you have intuitions at times that are wrong. Okay, uh, here's, a, here's how I would respond to this. Firstly, the point about belief in God being intuitive, that's not something subjective. There are psychological studies basically on theist children and on children raised by atheists. This belief is there and there are uh, like numerous studies on this. So this is not just me saying this is a subjective thing. This really is there. This belief is there. Now, uh, now, going by your reasoning, right, you are saying that uh, intuitive claims, like, they are not necessarily true, but they need to be proven false, right? The burden of proof is, uh, proof is on the person saying intuitions are false. Well, here's the problem. Uh, atheists generally will try to put the burden of proof against the theist, always, like, for decades now, they, will, they are always arguing that the burden of proof is on the theist. If intuitions need to be disproven, right, then the burden of proof by default is on the atheist. Moreover, not just in things like the problem of evil. Let's take the premise one of the Kalam that whatever begins to exist has a cause or the principle of sufficient reason or let's take biological life being designed. These things are intuitive. Almost everyone agrees these things are intuitive. Atheists will not take the burden of proof there. So why should I take burden of proof in these things? Moreover, in case of problem of evil, right? I personally don't think uh, you can come up with that view that intuitions need to be disproven. I don't take that view. I don't think intuitions are generally evidence. So we have a different or a different of a different uh, view on that, right? 
So yeah. in that case, uh, before we get too far, before we get too far along, I do have um, some, some questions because uh, the first thing you said is that they, there's evidence that people have a belief, but that's not the claim, right? So the claim was that people had this intuition. Now, an intuition, um, in an epistemic sense, intuitions don't just mean some everyday belief, right? Intuitions have a have a sort of uh, uh, what we might call like a, a primacy in the relationship epistemically. So they're going to have this sort of bottoming out feature. We can't really prove that people have that intuition in that way just by establishing they have the well, belief. I agree, people have the belief. That doesn't follow they have the intuition. Um, I also don't right. find, I don't, I don't think it's actually popular even um, to think that uh, life is designed. I think that, that, I think that that's not an intuition. That's a, that's a belief that we've, that we've formed over time through argumentation and people of the past believing in God. But I don't think that's an intuition. I think you're just equivocating on what intuitions are. I would disagree on two things. Firstly, the, as far as the belief in God is concerned, that is something natural. Even atheist uh, psychologists will say this. The reason being, there are psychological studies done on theists and atheist children. They have the atheist children who have never been taught these beliefs have them. So this cannot be something that's just taught. This is an intuitive belief. I don't think there's any way around that. Secondly, as far as life being designed is concerned, even most uh, like atheist uh, evolutionary biologists like Dawkins, etc., they will say that there's an intuition life is designed. Almost every one agrees that there is an intuition in this regard. Moreover, uh, if you read Michael Shermer's book, like uh, people like uh, that, they will also say this is an intuition. So, yeah, I, I don't um, think, I think that they, if, those, if that is all true, then they're just incorrect. But I'm not aware of any studies that have ever established that people have an innate belief in God, right? You could equivocate on God. You could say children have a habit of believing that there are things behind other things, like when the wind blows, that there's an agent regarding that wind, right? But this is, this is just to equivocate on what's meant by God, it, it, if you could. Do you want um, to in this regard? Yeah, yeah, send, send the papers, because I'm betting you're equivocating here. That sounds like, this is, would be the second equivocation I've heard so far in the conversation, though. So intuitions are going to be, like I said, those are epistemically primed. So when I say I have, like right now, the world as it is around me is presenting itself to me. There's the seemings that I'm, it seems as though I'm sitting on my couch. It seems as though I'm having a conversation with someone online. It seems as though, um, it just the world is presenting itself to me. Now, when I start making inferences from that, that's different than a seeming, right? So if I say, well, it seems to me that when the wind blows, um, there's going to be something behind the wind blowing. It's like, well, but, wh but where's that coming from? Because it seems to me that the wind is blowing, right? That's a seeming. But if we're looking for something beyond the seeming, that is that there's something behind it, that's an, infer that's an inference and not an intuition. So it could be the case children have these beliefs and form these beliefs at a very young age. But it's not the case that that's in any way an intuition. Intuitions are very different. So like, for instance, we're talking about inside of, a, inside of an ethical system. When we say that uh, goodness, we can kind of intuit what good means. We usually can't define it very well. It's really hard to kind of pin down what do we mean by goodness? What is what is good or bad? But I know that rape is bad, right? Whether or not whether, whether or not I, I know why or how to explain it or how to define it, we're pretty like most people go, hey, intuitively, rape is bad. That's an intuition that because that's epistemically prior, right? We're not inferring things. Start. Can I just respond to this? All of this. Yeah, yeah. Did you send the paper, by the way? Uh, well, I was going to link a book, and I was going to take the name of a like psychologist. You can look it up. I don't have paper well, on this. I book from psychologists. Well, I'm not. I'm, I'm more interested in the argument itself. If it's going to be take reading an entire book, I don't think that that's worth our time. I think it's going. You need to just present and summarize why what it is that they're saying that means that well, it is I, an intuition. Intuition. I think I, that something you can have a belief and it not be an intuition. So I you need to show that it's an intuition and not just a belief. Go ahead. Start. Okay, that's a subjective claim that uh, our paper is required, uh, if something requires a book to explain it, it's false. I think that's just a subjective claim. And to be honest, I have I, I no reason I didn't to claim that. I, I didn't I claim that. I think you all. were saying that. Uh, no, I said I it's not. It's, it's a book, it's just not going to be worth our time. It's just too much time. It'd be better if you just kind of summarize it all. I said, I didn't say it's false. That, that just would be ridiculous. Okay, uh, I don't have specific papers, but uh, I'll just skip one reference and you can look it up. Uh, Justin Barrett, he's an Oxford University psychologist. He wrote a book, Born Believers, and there are other studies and references like this. If you want, I can DM you those uh, later. But more than that, it seems you are just cherry-picking certain beliefs that you like and calling them intuitive, and uh, certain beliefs you don't like, you are not calling them intuitive. It's all just subjective. So, That's just a massive okay. strong man. That's just a massive strong man. Do you understand what something being epistemically prior means? Do you know what that means? Because I think maybe you don't. Can you define that? So when, when I say something is epistemically prior, what I mean is that there's, there's just not some inferential relationship between some pieces of, of, of additional information, right? So when we're talking about seeming, when we're talking about these are things that we might call intuitions. Now, when we have things that we know that come from inferences, these seem to be epistemically po uh, post our intuitions. So for instance, 
I know that, you know, I'm sitting on the couch having a conversation with you in virtue of the fact that I'm having these seemings about that, right? So that's, that's where knowledge is coming from in, in the system. So I'm not just cherry picking and going, these are seemings and these aren't. I'm saying that I, I would actually contend that your view is too per permissive for what counts as a seeming. You need to have them be epistemically prior. You can't have them be later on in the in, like downstream epistemically like that. That just doesn't make sense. You'd just be talking about beliefs, and beliefs aren't evident, of course. That's uh, what it seems to me that you're saying. You're saying that the uh, the innate natural beliefs, those are different from beliefs we gain from experience. Seems that what so, you're saying. So even, even if it's innate and natural to have a belief, like, for instance, I could be a machine, and I am programmed by my maker, like, for instance, in the hypothetical, I'm programmed by my maker to have the belief that I'm 10 years old. Now, I'm, in reality, I'm much, much older than 10 years old, right? But I'm programmed that I cannot in any way believe anything other than I'm 10 years old. What is it? In that case, even if we have innate beliefs, we can't trust them or take them seriously. That's what a seeming is, according to you. Either no, way, that's not what all I of the intuitions and... Uh, let me just finish my point and then you can respond. Here's the problem for you for your view. I have dozens of psychologists saying belief in God is intuitive. Almost everyone agrees. Even most philosophers will agree that uh, something coming from nothing is basically counterintuitive. Uh, for instance, most atheist philosophers agree that the infinity arguments in uh, actual infinity is counterintuitive. Or things like, uh, for instance, uh, going against the principle of sufficient reason. That's counterintuitive. Most biologists, and I can actually challenge you on this, they will agree, like people like Dawkins, Michael Sharma, etc. again and again, they will agree that design is intuitive. Did, so, you, did you understand again, what I said when I said even even if that were true, it doesn't mean your conclusion follows, right? So what I, what I, I said, what I yes, said so was... You're wrong. Yeah. I think your beliefs are not intuitions. People may innately believe something that does not mean that it makes them an intuition. Intuitions are epistemically distinct from beliefs in, in most epistemic systems. So what I was saying was that they need to be epistemically prior. Now, these, these, uh, these scientists can't, in principle, even demonstrate that it is. But second off, even if it were epistemically prior, you still have, you still have defeaters for the position, like the problem of evil is a defeater, right? And so in most epistemic systems, if you have a defeater, even if it's an intu even if it's intuitive, even if it's an intuition, but if, if, if the defeater is strong enough, it defeats the intuition. I have an intuition that the Earth is flat when I'm on top of a building. The Earth is, in fact, not flat because I have good reasons to think that the Earth is not flat. Even if I have the intuition that God exists, I have good reasons to believe that God, in fact, does not exist. Things like the problem of evil are just going to are going to cause me to believe that that's false. Okay, I'll just respond to this point. Firstly, these things are intuitions that I don't think even most philosophers will disagree with me on these things being intuitions. Now, secondly, you are saying that intuitions, uh, like there needs to be some counter evidence against this. If that's the case, and if I agree with you for the sake of argument on that, so then uh, the premise one of the Quran needs to be disproven. Principle of sufficient reason needs to be disproven in that case. Existence of God in that case, you need some arguments against it, so burden of proof is on the atheist. Now, with the problem of evil, here's the problem. Uh, for instance, uh, the problem of evil has certain assumptions. Let's suppose uh, those intuitions... Uh, Let's suppose you are the pro using the problem of even as an argument, right? That's the problem. You are using one set of intuitions against another set of intuitions. Let's suppose, according to you, problem of evil is correct, right? And I don't think it is. I don't think it works. And uh, I think it's a poor argument. But let's suppose, according to your beliefs, problem of evil is correct, right? Those intuitions are correct. And the intuition that God exists is false. In that case, still, some intuitions are correct and some are incorrect. Why are you taking them seriously? So many intuitions, belief in God is false, Be uh, belief in life after death is false, Bi biological life being designed is false, premise one of the Kalam is false. If you think these things are false, why are you taking intuition seriously in the first place? You are just, uh, again, you are either way, you are choosing one set of intuitions against another set of intuitions. That's it's, a question, it's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good question. It's a good question. I'm going to answer it because it's, it's actually a good question. Um, now, at the beginning there, you said that I was saying X, and you were just wrong about what I was saying. You maybe, maybe try to focus on what I'm actually saying, because sometimes it seems like you're having a conversation with yourself and not with me. But the question at the end there is, why are we putting some sort of um, weight or bearing on the, on the sort of moral intuitions we have as opposed to the intuition that God exists? So there's a good, re there's a good reason for this. This will lead to what's called um, skeptical theism. Are you familiar with skeptical theism? I am somewhat familiar with it, but to be honest, uh, I don't take it seriously. Um, well, if, if you're if you're correct here, right, that this is based on intuitions, and we're putting privacy of the intuitions that we have that are regarding uh, moral practices and moral moral beliefs there. If, if that if, if you're putting more weight there, then you are going to if you're not putting more weight there, you're going to end up in skeptical theism. So, for instance, 
if, if it's the case that my moral intuitions are incorrect, right, that I'm just wrong about the goodness that I see in the world, and it's actually the case that lying, rape, murder, all these things are at least potentially good, right, then it could be the case that God could just simply be lying to me, right? Now, if God's just lying to me, you now, now, now what you have, because he could have, like, morally sufficient reasons to lie to me. If, I, if my moral intuitions are, 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 are questionable in this way, then it could be the case that God just has some morally sufficient reasons to lie to me. But if we have a liar God, what does that mean? That's Descartes' demon. You believe in Descartes' demon. That's the, uh, the mad daddy of epistemic challenges. It leads to epistemic nihilism. So, Amar, you would commit yourself to epistemic nihilism if you, if you doubt, if you believe your intuitions that God exists and doubt your intuitions regarding morals and ethics, then you have no reason to think that God can't lie to you, right? Because you could just be mistaken with your, with your ethical intuition that lying is wrong, right? And so if you have a liar, God, you have Descartes' demon, and you're, and you're now an epistemic nihilist, Amar. Okay, I respond to this point. Firstly, you said that I was rambling. I wasn't I directly dealt with your point about these things not being intuitions, which is something I think most philosophers will also oppose you on. So I'm not rambling. I'm directly dealing with your point. Secondly, uh, let's go to your point about me being a skeptical theist or a nihilist in the sense that uh, God could be lying to me. Firstly, I have a question. Are you saying that if int our intuitions are not correct, right, that is equal to God being a liar? Are you saying this? This is about your, your, your knowledge of God lying to you or not, right? So, yes, essentially, if, you say, if you're saying, hey, look, I have an intuition that God exists, and I have an intuition that evil exists, and I go, okay, so there's a, there's a, there's a clash between these two things, i.e. the problem of evil, right? And your response is, well, you're putting too much weight on your moral intuitions. That is to say that you could just be wrong about your moral intuitions. This is, like an, this is a challenge to my knowledge about moral facts, right? So, if it's the case that you're challenging my moral facts on this ground, the problem is, is this is what's called skeptical theism. Skeptical theists, though, they could just, they, they were committed to then say that God could just be lying to me. And, I, and he could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me, even. And he, could have, he could be in the right to lie to me about every fact there is. Not and when I say lying is wrong, but if I think that that's wrong, skeptical theists is already committed to saying, hey, my, my moral intuitions are questionable in this instance when it comes to God. So I could just be wrong that God's lying to me. And it's, if it's the case God could be lying to me, then I can't actually know anything. Because that's how you know anything in most, uh, most theistic systems. You haven't answered my question. My question was, if our intuitions are about moral claims are incorrect, is that equal to God lying to us? Ontologically, That's no. The question. It's epistemically, yes. It's, it's an epistemic challenge, not an ontic okay. one. You need to, you're confusing the two. Okay, you're saying that is the case. Can you prove that claim? Can I prove what, what claim? Or is, is it just another intuition that our intuitions being incorrect is equal to God lying to us? Do you remember when I said it sounds like you're having a conversation with yourself? This, you, you didn't no, listen no, to my no, answer. No. The, the answer to the question was no. Start, uh, let Amar. me just make one point. You, you Amar, did you, that did you understand that my answer was no? Did you, did you understand that you my answer to your question was no? You said epistemically yes. I asked you for a justification of that. Can you give me no, a justification? No, that wasn't the answer. You didn't Other listen. Than the okay. Amar, it's like you're having a I conversation did. with yourself. You need to be talking to me. My answer was no. That is not the same as God. I'm, the ontological you want to rent, that has nothing to do with it is, it is and you are, I'm having a conversation with myself. You, you seem to be having you a conversation with yourself. And let me speak. Go ahead, go speak. ahead, sure. Okay, yeah, so, uh, okay. so so the idea here is that there's an epistemic challenge. There's a challenge to your epistemology, right? So it's not. it might be the case that God is in fact not lying to you. He's telling you the truth all the time. But from your view, you can't know that. Not if you're, not if you're a skeptical theist. A skeptical theist is going to be committed to saying, hey, even though I have these sort of ethical intuitions that God lying to me at every turn all the time would be morally wrong, my moral intuitions are already in question. That's how I'm, that's how I'm responding to the problems of evil to begin with, is to say, hey, let's question our moral intuitions. How do we know that you know, lying to me is always bad? But once, but once you grant that, what happens is something peculiar, because then you don't know that God's not always lying to you. But if you don't know that God's not always lying to you, now you have at least the potential that God has morally sufficient reasons to lie to you. And that entails epistemic nihilism. That's the point. Here's the problem with that. You haven't established that God has lied to me once. Doesn't have to. He wouldn't have to. He, he, would, he wouldn't even ever ha he would never even have had to lie to you for the, for the, for the conclusion to follow. He could have ontologically told you the truth in every term at turn, and you'd be epistemically consistent. You'd have to, in order to be epistemically consistent, you'd have to commit to epistemic nihilism. What if I believe it is impossible for God to lie to us? Well, why? Because I believe that when your argument is that lying is wrong and it's against God's nature. God wouldn't lie. That's the Islamic belief. I hold that. You are saying why I hold that? <laughs> well, I have reasons to believe God exists, and I have reasons to believe Islam is from God. That's why I hold that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you have, so you have these, these sort of moral intuitions that lying is going to be like, lying is bad, it's against God's nature, right? That's, that's part of I'm your sorry. belief system. How, how is my claim based on intuitions? 
cause any oh, so you don't think lying. So, so you don't say something like, okay, well, if God lied to me, it would be more. If he was lying to me all the time, it would be morally wrong. That would be like a moral, a moral abhorrence, right? But God wouldn't do do this Islamically. This is impossible. Something that's impossible for God to do. It's not based on intuition. Is it because it's, it's, it's because it's Islamic bad though? Is it because it's bad? Like God wouldn't do this. Yeah, but is it because it's bad? Why does there have to be a why? Well, because that's, that's a, I mean, like, if you just don't think that there's, there's not a reason why God won't lie to you, He just won't do it. No, that's here's silly. the problem with you. You are that my claim is based on intuition. I am not using in any intuition in this case. This is the Islamic position, and again, I am going to why uh, God exists when Islam is from God. I am not using personal intuitions to come to this point. You are using your personal intuitions as arguments, and again, in all of this, the problem is not going away. Your I'm not persuaded you understand the argument. Can you try maybe it, repeating it back to me what the what the what the issue with the view is, and then I'll see if you if you get if you've got it right in your head. Why does why does why is it the case that I think you're an epistemic nihilist? Can you just repeat my argument back to me? I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you said? Okay, I'm, I'm not persuaded that you actually understand what was said. So can you repeat my argument back to me? Why you're an epistemic nihilist? Actually, can you repeat it? It was like ten or fifteen minutes ago. Can you just repeat it? Yeah, yeah. So the idea is that you, you were asking a question about why I would put more weight on my moral intuitions when they're like in conflict with the existence of God, like the problem of evil. I'm, I'm way, even if I had the intuitions, which I don't have the intuitions that God exists, but even if I grant that I did, right? I have this intuition that God exists, and I have an intuition that you know about regarding morality. Some of these things are unethical, right? And you asked me the question, why would I put more weight on my ethical intuitions than on the intuition that God exists? My answer was because it will entail it's like nihilism. The method to get there goes like this. If we respond to the problem of evil, and the response to it is skeptical theism to say, well, we could just be wrong about our ethical intuitions, right? Our ethical intuitions could be mistaken. I could be wrong that rape is ultimately evil and that, um, that the Holocaust was ultimately evil. I could just be wrong and it's actually good in the eyes of God in some way, right? So if I grant this, though, now all of my ethical intuitions are in, in question. Among those is going to be like whether or not it's right or wrong to lie, right? So God told me that he, he's never going to lie to me, right? Yeah. But that's what a liar God might to say. Let, let me finish the argument, and then we'll get there. So if God, if God told me, hey, he's never going to lie to me, he told me in one of the holy books, whatever, whichever one you want, the Quran, he says he's never going to lie, right? A liar God might have morally sufficient reasons because my moral intuitions are mistaken. He might have morally sufficient reasons for having lied to me then, right? And so if it's the case that God could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me, then it's the case that God could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me all the time if he, wanted, if he needed to, right? But if, if God could be lying to me all the time, then I could be mistaken about all of my belief formation processes. I could be mistaken about everything because God could just be tricking me all the time. And he could have morally sufficient reasons to do so. And so it's the case that I actually can't know anything because now I have at least the epistemic equivalent of Descartes' demon. That's the argument. Now, can you try repeating it back to me to the best of your ability of my word? Because I don't think I, I really don't think that you're understanding the argument because you're not actually responding to it. I think I have responded to it, and while I don't bother to repeat it, I will just say one thing in this regard. You are assuming, you are making one assumption in this case that our moral intuitions being incorrect is equivalent to God lying to us. You are assuming that's not this the your argument. entire argument is assuming this. If that's, that's not, not the case, you. right? Let's suppose not, let's suppose that's not the case. Let's suppose mo our moral intuitions are not correct, right? And if this does not relate to God, whether God is lying to us or not, then how is this relevant to the entire discussion about God being a liar or not? How is this relevant well, then? Well, you gotta, you're gonna have to like, you're gonna have to like deny one of the premises I gave you, right? And that's that's gonna be the only move available to you unless you think that I'm, it's formally invalid. Sorry, right? can you give the premises again? Um, yeah, Just let give me get the, the premises. Let, let me get let me get the I can get the formalization for you, but it goes like it, Marco. Do you by any chance have the um? Do you have the do you have the syllogism that's for epistemic nihilism from uh from skeptical theism? Because I can't remember if I, I don't know if I have it saved anywhere. I don't know if if maybe Marco has it. We can just get the actual formalization of it. I know somebody's formalized it before, but it goes like so. If it's the case that okay. um, if it's the case that uh. I could be mistaken about my moral intuitions. This is the solution to the problem of evil, right? We have a, the solution is just I'm wrong about my moral intuitions, and I should instead trust my intuition that God exists. Right? So my moral intuitions are in question. I could just be wrong about all the badness that exists in the world. So if that's the case, then I could be mistaken about my intuition that lying to me all the time is a, is a bad thing too. And God doesn't do bad things, right? I could just be mistaken. So God could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me at every turn. Now, if it's the case that God could have could potentially have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me at every turn, then it's the case that I can't actually know anything because God could be lying to me about any given thing, that, any, any given belief that I form. 
right? But if I, can, if I can be mistaken about every single belief that I form because God is lying to me, then I could just be mistaken about every, every, every single belief that's like tautological. So I could just be, I'm an epistemic nihilist on that, on that right? If I, if I could be mistaken about every single belief I hold, then I'm an epistemic nihilist. Do you understand where I'm going there? There's a, okay, there's a better uh, formulation, and I can't know where it's at. Here's what you're saying. Your premise one is about our moral intuitions could be uh, incorrect. Your premise yeah, I could just be wrong means, about them. What? Yeah, that, that I could just be mistaken about my moral intuitions. That's, the, that's, moral the, intuitions. That, that's to say I would trust that the, the intuition that God exists instead of the intuition that God is, if God is all good, all powerful, and knowing he wouldn't allow bad things to happen. So I'm just wrong about those things being bad. I'm mistaken about my moral intuitions. Yeah, let's suppose you are wrong about our moral intuitions. How does this mm -hmm. equate to it is possible that God is lying to us? Yeah, because like um, that, if I think that if I think if I think that lying is bad and that's why God wouldn't do it, it's because God doesn't do bad things. It's not in His nature to do things like lying. Then I could just be mistaken by that, right? He could have if He's got morally sufficient reasons for for allowing things like rape, murder, and I'm just I'm just There's wrong about my intuitions. Right? Here's mm -hmm. the problem with that. Let's suppose. Your intuitions are incorrect, but that does not mean it is uh, it is the case or it is possible that it's the case. God is lying. I I agree. Could be that's not the argument. Or God could be lying. That is it independent could, of whether your intuitions are correct or not. Yeah, it could be the case that so God has God actually never lied. Amar, um, God could be a perfectly honest God. He could actually be perfectly honest, and the critique would still go through, and you'd still be an epistemic nihilist. Oh. Because, like, <laughs> did you not follow? It's not. It's not. An, it's not an ontological. I am following. Start your premise one is our intuitions could be correct or incorrect. Our intuition could be incorrect. Our moral intuitions, intuitions, not just intuition. Like, moral in intuition. Case, God is lying to us. I am sorry, but uh, why should I uh, believe this? You are just like you are just taking this on faith. And well, no, it's, it's just that. Here. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you actually understand the argument well enough, to be honest, because you seem to be, you're, you're, compu you're conflating epistemology with ontology several times, and I keep correcting you on it, and it's like you're, like I said, it seems like you're almost having a conversation with yourself and you're not actually listening to what's being said by me. I don't think I'm confusing these things. You are saying that, here's what you're saying, our intuitions could be correct, therefore you should believe that it is possible that God could, uh, our intuitions could be incorrect, therefore you should believe that uh, it is possible that God could be lying to us. Why? Why should believe so, about possibility or impossibility of anything be based on intuitions? You're just like so. Why? Why, why do you believe? Take why do you believe? We might just disagree about why you believe God can't lie to you. Why can God not lie to you? Well, that's the Islamic position because God told us, and basically, I'm taking God's testimony in this regard. Yeah. So you just believe that God can't lie to you because He told you He can't lie to you. But that's not based on intuitions. That's based on testimony. That's something different. Well, no, so essentially, most people will say that God can't, the, the reason that God cannot lie, it's not, just, it's not just because he said it, right? Like, that's just, like, not a reason to believe it at all, it's just because he said it, right? Instead, it's going to be a reason to believe it if it's, like, against God's nature, right? But, like, he can't do bad things, that's why, that's why most theists think God can't lie. And I think you're avoiding that, and I think you're, I think you're being dishonest here, because that seems like, that seems like the thing that most theists want to say. God, here's the reason I'm not being dishonest, and I think atheists are dishonest in this regard, and I think you are certainly being dishonest as well in this regard. You are trying to use intuitions as evidence while rejecting them as evidence at the same time. And that's just cherry picking. Like, yeah, it's cherry pick. or will for this. That, right? Tart does not need it. Tart, oh, Joseph. Yeah, I understood this point. Joseph. Yeah, here's the thing. I will waste my time to you. I will talk to Tart, right? You can message him what you like, but to be honest, I won't waste my time with you because uh, uh, it, it, it's okay. I, 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 I agree he's not he's not quite following, but that, that was clear yeah, when I, I asked him to so. try to put it back to me. Yeah, I, I, I agree. But, uh, but, Tart, if you have something new to say, we can discuss it. Otherwise, to be honest, we are just repeating ourselves at this point. That's fine. That's, that's fine. We can... We can yeah, I, I, I agree to, that he hasn't... Amar, I don't think that you could even, I don't even think you could repeat back to me what I said and actually make it the critique that it was, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude here, but I don't, I don't think that you followed the critique. It's an epistemic challenge. Um, and you just saying, oh, I believe that God cannot lie because God told me so. It's like, okay, cool. That's what a liar God would say anyways, right? But, it, but at the same time, the reason that most people will say God can't lie is that it's like, Amar, I'll finish this and then you can have last word. God, you, you don't think as an atheist, you cannot think even in principle that intuitions are evidence. 
and most people are going by intuitions and i'm trying to actually not go by intuitions so, yeah i take so, i take intuitions to be like if, if what you mean is like a set of seemings or something like that i just take those to be epistemically higher and prima facie justified until there's until there's a, there's a defeater even if it's the case that god even if, even if it's the case that i have hey amar i i let you talk but i can't get you to let me talk. okay amar i let you amar i let you talk amar i let you speak amar i was i was mid Okay. Okay. Mark. I'll let you. I'll let you go, and then if you could, just let me go as well, because you keep talking and kind of monologuing. Yeah, I think I was being interrupted again and again, but I'll just keep it short, and then Todd can respond. As far as the point about intuitions is concerned, literally most biologists will say the same thing I'm saying regarding intuitions. Most philosophers will say the same things I'm saying regarding intuitions. What is intuition and what isn't? So, I think Todd. I think that's the best claim at that point. I mean, Joseph, can you shut up when I'm talking? Literally. Yeah, yeah. Even if I don't deny, I seriously won't change reality. And uh, again, what's the point? I answered this question. I did. Like his little argument was far into. Ask your question. Yeah. I said. I said, ask you a question. Can you hear me? Well, you can't. So are you saying that here's the problem? Well, here's what you can verify, and here's what you can't verify. You can verify whether something is from God or not. In case of Islam, I would. Say, I'm asking you to give me a moment. So this, I'll answer a question. I'll I'll answer it faster than you answer my questions. As well, the claim about whether God is telling the truth or not, right? I don't think they are. This was your question. How can you know whether God is telling the truth or not? This was literally your question. I don't think you can. I think this is something that. What's the point? That we can't verify. Therefore, it could be false. Joseph, is this your point that we cannot verify whether God is telling the truth or not? Therefore, God could be telling the truth or not. Yeah, I don't think how that follows. So the, so the so the point is is that when you can't verify that God is telling the truth, the way in which most theists are going to say are are going, to, are going to say that God is telling the truth, the way that we know that is because telling a lie is going to be against God's nature because God is omnibenevolent, right. all good, right? And so when when we say God is omnibenevolent, if He's omnibenevolent, He's not going to have He's not going to lie to us. But the problem is is that skeptical theists are granting uh, that they don't have a good answer to the problem of evil, but they're just going to say, okay, well there there's probably something wrong with our moral intuitions, right? So when they think that there's something wrong with our moral intuitions, this has some weird uh, outcomes. One of them is epistemic nihilism, because once you're committed to saying that God exists and that's um, and that we're just mistaken about moral intuitions and those moral intuitions clashing with God isn't a problem because we could just be mistaken. We're flawed beings. We get things wrong. But once you grant that, now it seems like God could be lying to us if he has morally uh, sufficient reasons to do so. But I'm a flawed being. I don't know whether or not God can have that, right? So, because I can, I can just challenge my moral intuitions. Lying, uh, that, that lying is bad, right? I have that intuition, moral, it's morally objectionable to lie, and so God shouldn't do it. But I could be flawed, and He could have a reason to lie to me. But a liar, God, is going to be the same as they call a demon, right? Art in but, this case, again, you are just using your intuitions. You are not giving an argument or reason for thinking that is the case. You are just using your intuitions again and uh, pretending they are like true or evidence. I gave, I gave you. I gave you an argument. Did you, did you not hear it? Here's the point. Start. Here's your argument again. It's possible that our intuitions could be wrong. Therefore, our moral intuitions, God could not our intuitions, our moral intuitions. Us. Focus. It's a, it's a specific kind of intuition. It's not just any intuition. It's our moral intuition. Here's your argument. Our moral intuitions could be wrong. Therefore, it is the case God could be lying to us. 
That's not that's Again, not the argument. I call that term. That is literally you just, the you skip, argument. You skip, a, you skip a bunch of steps. If it's the case, what did that I say? Armor, you, not, skip, you skip several steps. I told you that you're not listening. That, that, that you're not. Uh, Amar. Let's not. Amar. Ten minutes. Interrupt me. Doesn't matter. What not. specific steps did I miss? I will keep quiet. Tell me what steps I missed. Cool, cool. So, so listen, listen up. Listen good, because I'm not, I'm not going to keep saying the same argument over and over again. It is not just what you said. There, there were several steps in between there. So, if it's the case that I could be mistaken about my moral intuitions, then it's the case I could be mistaken about my moral intuition that lying is wrong. If I can be mistaken about the moral, my moral intuition that lying is wrong, then God could have morally, uh, he, could, he could have a moral reason to lie to me. Right? There could, I could just be mistaken that lying is always wrong. There could be a good reason for him to lie to me. That, that's not particularly controversial. But if it's the case that God could have a good reason to lie to me, then he could be lying to me. Right? He could be lying to me about everything. And he could have morally sufficient reasons for doing so. But if God can have morally sufficient reasons for lying if he do so, and therefore could be lying to me, then I don't actually have good reason to think God is not lying to me. Right? But if I don't have good reason to think God is not lying to me, then I'm going to tell it's an nihilism. Because God could just be lying to me about every single thing that I believe. All of it. He could be lying to me about everything. And I have no way of knowing. Okay, uh, I'll just put your argument because I just saw like three steps in that argument. First step is our moral intuitions could be wrong. If that's the case, it could be the case lying is good in certain cases. If that's the case, it is possible that God has a good enough justification for lying to us. If it, was, if it is possible that God is lying to us, it probably is the case God is lying to us or it could be the case God is lying to us. These are your four steps. I don't think I missed anything here. These are your four steps, right? I'm just, I'm just gonna, try, I'm just gonna try to write it. I'm just gonna try to write it out because you seem to, like, you seem to make leaps and not really like pay close, close attention. So I'm just gonna write it out real quick in Gen Chat. How would I uh, make a leap here? Yeah, well, I, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Let me, let me just write it out really quickly so that we so we'll uh, uh, Here's what you should do: write the premises like one by one in the chat. Like, don't anyone like, please don't write when Tart is writing so that his. Uh, or how many premises they are, they can be clear cut in the debate chat. Yeah, I don't think uh, take the of atheism, well, I think atheism is a mental illness. Yeah, he is like a Muslim, Dario Dawkins. <laughs> what comes up to stage? Question and answers. What comes up to? Come up, man. Why not? <laughs> Invite to speak. Everybody wants. Everybody wants to talk. <laughs> Let's gang bang this guy. <laughs> I don't think you can, Marco. I'm pretty sure we debated, right? What's the third option? Oh, you're the guy? Oh my god. This guy's yeah, great. You, you, yeah. <laughs> you are saying the third option for other than something coming from. And yeah, I'm not going to derail with what? another discussion because that, that's like a totally yeah, different topic than the uh, actual problem of evil and um, response yeah, that skeptical is problem, would give. Me and Bart were having a discussion, right? We are supposed to actually have a 1v1 discussion. I don't see why, like, no, I'm, I was I joking. We're not gonna actually. No, no. Uh, you, you can have like a discussion with Art. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> Dog joined too. Just bring all the atheists up. Like Dog is an atheist, right? Oh, he's requesting. Bring Dog up here. Uh, Tart, I can only be here for 10 more minutes, so please try to, like, type quickly and that's just that. I'm getting close to the finish, hold on. Oh, and okay. can you guys give me back my prompts, too? Yeah. Give yeah. me something like this. Let's see here, okay. where is that? Uh, let me just see. If our moral intuitions could be wrong, then I could be wrong about lying. That lying is immoral, right? If I could be wrong yeah. that lying is immoral, then God could have morally sufficient reason to lie to me. If God could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me, then I can't know that God is lying to me or not. If I cannot know that God isn't lying to me, then God could be lying to me. Right? The rest is that if uh, if God could be lying to me, therefore I can't know anything to be true. 
So what I have to do is uh, show that which premise is wrong in this argument. Yeah, I, think, I think I'm I think I'm missing a premise in there somewhere. Something from 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 the end part. But I I'll, I'll probably think of the premise later. I'm, I'm sorry to wind down myself. But go ahead. Which one of these premises do you deny? Uh, firstly, I don't think I will deny one. Although I think it's false, but I won't deny that. Uh, as for the second one, if I could be wrong that lying is immoral, then God could have morally sufficient reason to lie to me. Uh, I would say that no. So even if I'm wrong, so even if I'm wrong that about that that my moral intuitions could be wrong, God still can't have moral sufficient reason to lie to me. Wow. I don't think that's possible, and here's why. Uh, in most atheist arguments, right, atheists will generally try to assume they will try to pretend to assume that possibility needs to, impossibility needs to be proven. For instance, you will try to assume, just give, uh, I'll just give one example that something can come from nothing. Same way you'll try to assume that it's possible that God could be lying. I don't think you can assume that and I don't think assumption works and I'll, I'll give a very simple reason for this. I think everyone here knows of the S5 axiom, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, axiom logic, S5, that's if something is possibly necessary, then it is necessary. Going by your yep. logic, I can just assume existence of God is possible and therefore God does exist. So that's and the ontological argument, that, which obviously begs the question. Wait, why, he, why did he jump to ontological it, argument? What, what? I, I think because he doesn't actually have a response here. So, the, so the, the problem is, is that if you deny that premise, right? Like, if if I could be wrong, I think the, I the one was that. A one one or not. What is it? You are literally dodging the point I made. We are supposed to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? You are saying I am dodging the points you are making. You literally just dodged the point I made. I didn't bring so up the ontological the argument. I made. Point. Let me finish and please respond to this point. This is a very simple point. You are assuming that premise to uh, generally assuming and atheists to generally try to assume that possibility needs to be proven. Uh, possibility is true that impossibility needs to be proven. You are assuming it is possible for God to have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me. You are assuming this is possible. Here's the problem for atheists. You can't just assume things are possible. And in fact, you don't do that. Very simple reason is because of the S5 axiom. If we are just assuming possibilities, possibility to be true, right? Then I can just say it is possible that God exists, and because of the S5 axiom, God does exist. I think you I, need I to give reasons for uh... possibility to be true. Start, start, let me just finish the point. Either proof possibility is true, otherwise your claim is just irrelevant. Again, so, I'm applying yeah, the same yeah, criteria. So let, let's, let's, uh, the easiest way to do it is to test the negation. But if the negation is true, that if I could be lying, the, the one that you're objecting to is if I could be wrong that lying is immoral, then God could have morally sufficient reasons to lie to me. Is that the one you're attacking? Yeah, is that the correct that, one? Uh, it's possible for God to have moral yeah. so, reasons to lie. If it's if it's the case that it's impossible, that is that it entails a contradiction for him to lie to me, then I couldn't be wrong that lying is immoral, right? Do you agree? Can you repeat what you said? So if it's the case that it's impossible for God to lie to me, right, then I can't be mistaken that lying is wrong to me. Correct? That's just gonna that's just gonna follow Modus Tollens. Let me just repeat what you said. If it is impossible that uh, God is uh, if it is impossible that God is lying to me, right? No, if it's, it's impossible for lying. God to lie to me, not that he is lying to me, if it's impossible for him to lie to me, then I can't be mistaken yes. that it's wrong, that I can't, then it's not possible for me to be mistaken that God isn't lying to me, right? Hopefully, I'll give a simple reason why it's not. You're making an assumption. You are assuming that that's supposed for humans to lie is morally good or evil. That means the same is the case for God to lie is morally good or evil. You are literally assuming, and this is the assumption I brought up with Joseph earlier, you are assuming that the same moral criteria that applies to humans applies to God. It could be the case, it could be the case that lying for humans is good, but for God it's evil. Why not? You, I don't, I don't know what... Wait, I don't know what the road, road, I don't know what the road, road. I'll, I'll give a very simple reason for this. Here's the assumption, and this is the assumption that's going to be in uh, almost all problem of evil arguments. The same moral criteria that applies to humans applies to God, and I'll give a very simple reason why that uh, this assumption is there. The assumption is, for instance, the usual way atheists will argue this point is that let's suppose a human kills someone that is evil, so God kills someone that is evil, or suppose a human can prevent someone from getting raped and chooses not to, that is evil. Uh, so if God can prevent someone from getting raped and chooses not to, that is evil. This is the assumption. Here's the problem for the atheists here. This is false, and I'll give a very simple reason why. The assumption that the same moral reason that uh, criteria that applies to humans apply to applies to God is false. And here's the justification for this. Let's suppose there's a person who kills someone in self-defense. 
that's not evil that's good right according to most atheists that would be something good now let's suppose the same person kills someone in cold blood according to most atheists that would be something evil now we in this case we have the same person same being committing the same action in two different circumstances once it is good and once it is evil in the case of god we have an entirely different being in entirely different circumstances how can you say that it is necessarily evil you can't the entire argument problem is I don't even know that you're responding uh, to the point. Like you're just kind of rambling at this point. What, what's yeah, what's the response? To the point right, I don't know what the relevance uh, of this objection is. Like, the point of the argument. I is think that, you're just engaging in denial at this point. Like this is actually quite dishonest. The problem of evil is based on the simple assumption, and your argument is based on the assumption that the same moral criteria that applies to humans applies to God. This is your argument. Your argument is lying for humans can be morally good. Therefore, lying for God can be morally good. This is your argument. Like these are the first two premises. So, I don't know, I really the same argument, I'm so it's confused. It's like, he's honest. jumped between the ontological argument, and then he jumped over to the problem of evil again. You're, we've already got your response to the problem of evil. What we're, we're talking about is the not, issues with... I think, here's the thing. This hey, is not, hey, this is you've, not ta you've talked a lot. If you, you could, I mean, you've, you've talked a lot, and everyone, in the, everyone in the chat has stayed quiet while you talked. If you could just I give know, us know, the same courtesy as well. So, you jumped from the ontological argument to the problem of evil, and we were initially talking, discussing generally about the problem of evil, but your response to the problem of, the, of evil was basically skeptical theism. Like we could just be wrong about our moral intuitions. That was the that was the point being made, and you were asking me why I put more weight on the moral intuitions than I do on, say, for instance, if God is. Um, he left, by God the way. Is, oh, well, that's no fun. Yeah, he was just. Uh, he, I don't think he was responding, and he got really confused, particularly there at the end. Um, I, I could tell he wasn't quite getting the getting the argument, and that's why I was trying to write it out for him. Um, I, I don't know what else to do for him, to be honest. I'm, I'm convinced Muslims have, like, mental illnesses from this. I, I didn't quite get what he was um, responding to at the end. I don't know what he was doing there, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think he was spazzing because he, he, he kind of knew that he didn't have a good response, and so he was just trying to be like... He was trying to change the, change the subject as quick as he could because he was trying to go back to the initial discussion, which we were just kind of casually chatting about the problem of evil, and his response seemed to be skeptical theism, and he, seemed, and he asked me, you know, why would I put more weight on my moral intuitions than I would on, like, if... Because he wanted to say God, God's existence is, like, intuitive and everyone believes it. Anyways, I said, I don't right. think that's true, but I'm just going to pretend for the sake of argument maybe it is, but I still have, even if it was, like, an intuition, right? I have good reasons to deny that intuition, so I can keep that intuition in check via other facts, like, for instance, the, the problem of evil is a response to that, right? And he was like, well, why do you put more weight on your moral intuitions than you do on the intuition that God exists? And I said, well, because of this argument right here. If, 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 if I put more weight on God's existence and just use skeptical theism to overcome the problem of evil, then I end up being an epistemic nihilist, and that's the thing that keeps me <laughs> So. Yeah, um, because it seemed like he was kind of having an issue with the second premise, but then they started talking about the modal ontological argument for some reason, and then he started saying, um, and then he started saying something like something could be good for God, but not, I, I don't know how that's supposed to respond to anything, but, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he was even attempting. There were times in the discussion where it seemed like he wasn't actually talking to me, he was talking to someone else. Like, that was like the entire just showing his ex. Yeah, it just seemed like I, I couldn't figure out what he was, he was responding to things I wasn't even saying. And then when I specifically said no to one of his questions, he responded as if I said yes and said, you said yes to this. And I said, no, I, I just said no, I don't believe that. Like, I, I literally just answered no. <laughs> and he just kept going. It was like, oh, the answer is yes. And I was like, okay, dude. Like, <laughs> presumably to say, like, to even go on that ramble to say that things can be like, you know, something that we ordinarily take to be wrong or right could be different for God. Like, presumably that's just to agree with the second premise, which is to say that you could be wrong, that lying is immoral. At least in the cases that... I didn't even catch that. Good catch, man. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. I, I, I missed that part. If I heard that part, I just said the same thing. Yeah, that's just to agree with the second premise. Good catch. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm wondering if he recorded it, because he seems to be interested in recording I the recorded discussion it. and with that and posting them. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll probably see it somewhere online. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, uh, he does record his debates. Uh, he recorded debates. We uh, recorded a debate we had a while ago, and he remembers me, so, yeah. Wait, Margaret, can you send the debate you had with him? <laughs> no, that was a disaster of a debate. <laughs> I don't think anybody should listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was a disaster too. I was just like, I, he just wasn't—he wasn't tracking like nine out of ten things I was saying, and then was responding to things I explicitly said no to. And it's just like, okay, you gotta, we gotta be having a conversation with me, not with some random like I don't know. He had some. There was somebody else in the room apparently because I don't know who the fuck he was talking to. This going to me. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was embarrassing. Wait, I, Parker, I was like, did you debate him problem, on problem of evil? Or? Um, I don't remember. It was a while ago, actually. Um, 
he actually does this a lot. He kind of throws a lot of arguments, and when you um, push him against the wall against like one thing in the specific argument he presented, he would immediately jump to some totally different argument and start talking about something else. Oh, yeah, like he was doing here. Yeah, like uh, in the middle of start presenting uh, the problem and asking him which premise he rejects, he jumped to like model ontological argument for some reason, right? And we were like, what's the reason for doing that? And he just kish galloped. Yeah, he starts rambling. I don't know why he does that. It's very, con it's, it's confusing. And he did the same thing to Monkey Boy a few times. I was like, hey, he just, he can't seem to stay on the topic. I think he gets, I think he feels like he's getting cornered. And once he feels like he's getting cornered, then he just starts spazzing and going in multiple directions, trying to think of something to say to get out of it. Or to change the topic, and I'm, I'm not I'm not very pushy about my points. You know, like I'm I'm usually really polite in the discussions and stuff. So I don't think I was being like mean to him or anything. Um, but he just seemed to be, he feels threatened when he's cornered. I can tell. I'm like, oh, okay, dude. Again, I'm not trying to threaten you. This isn't this isn't me attacking you. You're not you're you're not a bad person for believing what you believe. I'm just trying to show you why I don't think it's true. In all seriousness, you're too polite, and yet he was still being a dick to you. I mean, he he wanted the mic so bad. Like the very little times you got to talk, he's like, I'm not done. Like, let me finish. And, like, how long does he have to talk to make a point get across? And then he also just, like, he didn't say anything new. It seemed like he just said the exact same thing, like a broken record the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, he never really... I don't think he, ever, I don't think he actually responded to any of the points. Like, for instance, his, bio, his point about biology, he says that they've tested and found out that the belief in God is like an intuition that everyone has. And I just don't think that that's true. They might have found that kids had a habit of believing in things that were things behind the wind. That doesn't mean that's an intuition, right? That doesn't that's just not what that's not what that means. It just means that we have a, a habit of personifying things like wind. Um, and that doesn't yeah. and that doesn't and that's our reason to believe that that's actually you know something true, right? even if it is the case. But his point is like, well, you haven't. You're you're cherry picking intuitions, and I'm like, well, oh, no, I'm not. Oh, you can come up with more if you want. Let me see. Invite to speak. There you go. You can come up, man. Oh, and he left again. Come back. Invert to start. He's here. Welcome back. I can't hear him. Can you? Hello? There you are. Yeah, we couldn't hear you for a second. There, go ahead then. Okay. Uh, did someone record the debate? If you did, share it with me and I'll put it on my channel before I sleep. Okay. Did someone um, record? I think Monkey Boy said he was recording. Um, if he has it, he, he feels like sharing it, maybe. I, I don't know, but I think Monkey Boy oftentimes puts them on his, on his channel. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it on my if channel. He, it's his content. Yeah. What? He's going to put it on his channel. And if, if you like, you can afterwards download it or something and put it on your channel yeah. as well. Okay, uh, are you okay? I can put it on my channel, right? Uh, you don't have an issue with that? No. I, usually okay, we're pretty... Uh, Bob's here too! What's up, Bob? <laughs> yeah, Bob missed when you put it on the excitement. Send me the name. I think you blocked me and I can't message you. So whenever you put it on your channel, just send me the you. link. I block you. I've closed the end. Oh uh, yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't allow DMs okay. for people who aren't friends. Okay. Uh, whenever uh, I just ask Art for the link, then sure. uh, do you plan to upload it soon? Well, you're gonna stay in the server. I'll just post it in general and ping you. Yeah. Uh, I probably won't. I'll just message Art. Can All I right. message you, Art? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you're interested in debate, you can stay on the server until he like posts it and oh, we've not bother Art afterwards. You might find some interesting people on here. This server has a lot of philosophically interesting people that uh, come around quite often. So it could be beneficial, you know, to listen in, even if it, even well, if you don't agree with the things he said. Do you think Tart that he's actually interested in like um, um, some philosophical discussions in an honest way and no. like engaging and learning about stuff? He just wants to go down a dialogue. I'm going to like be agnostic. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I think I can stay in the server for a few days. Maybe I'll get a debate or two here. Uh, yeah. Okay, then. Bye. <laughs> yeah, this guy was someone's something special. I, I'm a liberal, bro. I like honest and fair debates. I don't know. My mind is like flexible, bro. Like I like to hear out people, you know. But it's just, you know, it's a me thing. Like, this was so cancerous. Why? I, I can understand someone not understanding a point or you know getting a little confused, but I, I think there were times where he was actively strawmanning me even after I said, "Hey, that's not what I said," and it's literally not what I said. I was times. grinding my teeth watching this whole thing. I would have admitted I've been told I'm too nice about that. I don't stop people and go, hey, stop fucking strawmanning me. I just wait for them to finish and say, hey, that's just not what I said. <laughs> it, it, it's hey, impossible for me not to. Some yeah. people don't really know how to, like, receive information for real. Like, I've had mm -hmm. discussions with people sometimes where it seems like what they're fishing for is, like, a, like a catchy one-liner or, like, a, you know, like, they want to make it look like a gotcha moment. 
You know what I mean? Like, I think some people aren't even looking for good points. They don't really know how to like keep a ball rolling in a conversation. So like, uh, lately I've been you perfectly to... described this guy, bro. I, I feel like I have to be less emotionally involved. Sometimes I catch myself like tearing hairs out. A lot of two people I'm talking to don't really know how to like talk about a lot of this shit for real. And, uh, you know, I let certain people get under my skin. I think, especially in the text chat, like Maximo just annoys the living shit out of me. Um, but overall, I think I usually keep my calm much better in DC than I do in, in, in text chat. In text chat, I'm going like, "You're a fucking moron," and then in DC, I'm like, "Hi, how are you?" <laughs> you know? like, part, like, yo, like people who don't read philosophy or are interested in it, any sort of clarification of terms that you request ends up being reduced to pedantry, bro. Like. They're like, do you believe in free will? Um, by free will, do you mean, you know, so-and-so? And they'll be like, okay, bro, but by that logic, everything is subjective. It's like, are you even listening to me, dude? Like, I just want to know what you mean. Um, he, was, he, did, he actually did make that move. Funny enough, he was he made the he jump from, from this to, then it's all subjective. And I was like, what? Yeah, no, it's like, anytime you want clarity. That in that debate. Yeah, anytime you want clarity. And then they think, like, you challenging the view means that you believe in some sort of nihilism. Which, and that's not, not just a God thing. It's like, anytime you want somebody to just have a clearly, like, hashed out view... And then you show them the view is like kind of bullshit. They'll be like, "Well, I guess nothing holds then. No positions are true then. <laughs> like, my shit isn't true." You know, like so. No, nah, it's just a way people talk about. It. But you guys are having a lot of fun playing wiffle ball with these uh, these randos. Um, <laughs> uh, we're just fucking around, man. It's just it's just funsies. Because mm-hmm. he was in a server. Like, I like, very clearly didn't understand the, even like the, he didn't understand the problem of evil, and then he was confused about the second argument. He was confused about like how to respond to a premise, and it's like, but it's still fun. It's, it's like, it's like okay, cool, I can have a chat with somebody and it just be for fun. Yeah, he said the logic. Literally, he doesn't know what he was talking about. He said the logical problem of evil is the idea that suffering is evil, and that suffering is unnecessary. And then he had some other thing like, and we presuppose that it applies to God in the same way it does to us. I'm like. What the hell are you talking about? That's not what the logical problem of evil does at all. It doesn't. This is not what it's committed to saying. I don't. Yeah, it sounded like Tart's like he wasn't responding to Tart's argument. It wasn't Tart's argument that it wasn't the argument sort of like the whole like if like skeptical theism leads to Pandora's box. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like yeah. So it's I don't like, really like understand you... why. Like you could completely disregard. Like you could say, okay, like we don't know what's. Like, if anything, what he was saying was actually supporting your argument. Because if it's not wrong for God to lie, then like we, he might be lying to us all all the time. Like we might have to be skeptical of everything, right? Like if anything, that was all... question's point, yeah. No, no, but see, is that guy from Clubhouse? Is that guy? He, he's no, he's from a server. Well, the way I found him, he wasn't here. I don't know. Clubhouse like, is boring as fuck. Yeah, he's he's done things on Clubhouse, but um. Bro, ninety percent of the time in that server, it's just a bunch of old ass people in there, like talking like about bingo and movies and shit. Like they're not even like, talking about <laughs> yeah. philosophy most of the time. I just deleted. I deleted Clubhouse Tart, a long time ago. Tart, Tart, this is what you get for, Tart, this is what you get for debating Pajits, bro. This is what you get. Pajit? Did you just call him yeah. a Pajit? A Pajit, Pajit. <laughs> oh, oh! I thought you said Kajit. I was like, I was no, thought, I thought you were making like a Skyrim sand people no, joke because no, the Pajit no. from the sand. It's <laughs> funny that they both sound the same, right? Pajit, Pajit. <laughs> That's still funny. That's Wait, still funny. I thought you were Skyrim, in Skyrim. They have sand people named Khajiit. The Khajiits are like cats that are from the Sandlands, and they're not like, and they talk kind of funny. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, the Khajiit. Nice, so nice. I thought he was saying this guy just happened to be a Khajiit. Like, <laughs> he was saying uh, I was saying, yeah, he's, he's a Khajiit. <laughs> a Khajiit. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, yeah, that guy was completely like uh, I don't know who he was responding to. I was so confused. I'm like, I, did I like, completely? Did I have like an aneurysm? Did I have like, a stroke? Am I like confused? I think he was trying to change the subject as fast as he could. Or, I think that's that was the goal. Guys, are you debating? Sure. No, we we finished up the debate, but you can debate somebody if you have a topic. Well, I guess. What was the debate? Can you summarize? Can you summarize? I'm can you tell me the summary of what happened? Uh, we were we started no, talking me? a little bit about the problem of evil, um, and then we moved to yeah. a different argument. The argument was that skeptical theism entails epistemic nihilism. Um, because his response to the problem of evil What do you think about problem of evil? What do I think about it? Um, I think it's like the evidential yeah. problem of evil is uh, going to be like a, a better case against God because there's a strong disconfirmation of the existence why? of an all good God. Why? 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 Um, because it's just it's going to be what an odd thing, but we expect okay. that kind of a God. Okay, what about wisdom? What about if we believe he's wise? Yeah, I mean, being omniscient would make you all wise as well. That's kind of contained in the term, I think. Bro, I, I, I don't understand. understand. I can hear you. Wisdom's a weird. Hold on. Let him speak. No, it's not a weird concept. Let him speak. Let him finish. 
Mm. What do you mean by what do you mean by these boys? Like, um, like if you know all facts or whatever, then you're gonna know like the the wisest decision. The fact that is the wisest you, decision. If you take those in the movie, you criticizing you criticizing his concept of wisdom. What? Um, you criticizing the concept of wisdom? No, no, no I was I was saying that wisdom is contained in omniscient. Right. Like perfectly being perfectly wise would be like contained in the term omniscient. I don't know, but he's kind of interrupting you. I don't know if either. Is he new to the server? I, I was listening to him. Yeah, human. He was just saying that uh, if you're um, if you're all knowing, then you also know like the most wise thing to do. Like, yeah. Okay. So he agrees to. Like, I don't understand. Is he so, on the opposing side or? The contention is just like, how do you know that there's this god with all omniscience or whatever? How do I know? What? How do you know there's an all-knowing god? Well, that's irrelevant. Oh, okay. Well, it's uh, <laughs> relevant to attributes. Yeah, I, um, I, I think that if wisdom is like contained in omniscience, right? Um, the challenge is about those properties to begin with. I don't, so I don't see how like like saying, oh, well, here's this one property. What, what would that do to the argument? We're gonna get into debates. I'm just debating. I'm just arguing the concepts. We're not getting into debates or like how how is this was wisdom or your objections to wisdom, God's wisdom. Uh, I don't care about that. I didn't object. I to wisdom. Wisdom. What did you hear what I said? <laughs> Oh my god, this is just like another game. You're even more retarded than the one. Yeah, this is just another <laughs> retard. <laughs> Wait, is he Muslim oh, too? Oh, I was wondering how oh, he left. Okay, well, I don't see how wisdom solves anything there. Like, what's yeah, I was the one what's criticizing what? wisdom because I was just like, um, yeah, like the whole thing of whether or not God knows like the most wise thing to do is like really what's at stake right now. Like we're, <laughs> we're trying to figure out if there really is a God that knows what's best for us. Like that's, that's the point. Um, I saw Moxie had requested to speak earlier, and I didn't invite anybody up on the stage because we were having that one-on-one. -on -one. But now we're just kind of all fucking around, so I'm gonna invite anybody to come up. Wait, did is that Zelini? I've not seen Zelini in for fucking ever. What's up, Zelini? Zelini was on here literally yesterday. Yeah. I didn't even know. I haven't seen him on here in so in so long. So, anyways, yeah. What's up? He was in BC with us. Like he was in BC. Oh, with... really? Yeah. Maybe you yeah. just didn't notice. Moxie doesn't want to come up. Oh no, he was talking with Marco, wasn't he? That's cool. Yeah, this was yesterday, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that, that human guy was... I think he was just trolling. Oh, I, I did want to talk to you about one thing. Uh, why did...